This is a walk that those close to Karin Chapchumba did not anticipate. Former television anchor Louis Otieno was a man keen on setting the record straight. Karin Chapchumba's death became national news. A man who had for many years relied news about other people had suddenly become the news. In a dramatic fashion, as media houses scrambled to document the sudden demise of the telecommunications engineer. A post-mortem report will later reveal that Karin had been killed and her death was as a result of manual strangulation. Police had a homicide in their hands, but did not have any suspects. Family members singled out Louis Otieno as the man who might have known something about the mysterious killing of the happy-go-lucky but quiet girl. Louis had in the past had a run-in with the killies. My landlord called me. Can you come over? We need to have a discussion with you. And I went to the landlord's office and the landlord says there's a man who's been here about two hours before. And he says he's a committee chairperson within the apartments. And he says you have eloped, you've run off with his daughter and I am now a security risk and as it is I should be evicted and he has personally come there to represent the committee and to say I should be evicted. To ask my landlord, so what does that mean? They told me, do you know this gentleman? I said yes. Have you ever had this discussion with him? I said no. I don't know anything about this. What are you going to do then? I mean, it's your house. I said, no, we told him to put it, in, put it in writing. It's an allegation. Write it down. We take it from there. From what I heard, he walked off in a half. I was upset. On the second day, I actually went to Kilimani Police Station because that was the jurisdiction within where I lived. Lou was called again for questioning by the police. This time, it was not about his relationship with his neighbor. The questioning was taking a different dimension. I sat there and uh, there was the OCPD and the, the CIO and they asked me, uh, do you know anything about this? I said, no. When did you last see this girl? I said, about a week ago. So they told me, this is what has happened. This girl has been found dead. And uh, it doesn't look natural. So. Would you like to make a statement? Do you want to make it later? Do you need your lawyer to be here? The police were treating Louis Otieno as a principal suspect. He just told me, look, we have reached a level where we really want to get to the bottom of the story. And one of the ways to do this is uh, to get DNA. In a situation like this, it's one of the things that can help determine with certainty that this is where this case is going. Are you willing? And again, they asked me, do you want to consult? At that time, I had not actually engaged a lawyer. At that particular point, I had not engaged a lawyer yet. I had not even engaged Philip Mulgore. I think I went and met him actually after that, that event. And uh, I looked at the DC and I told him, if this is the game changer, I'll do it. I'll do it because I don't think I have anything that will contradict what I've told you so far. And the way I see it, it will then help me. If this is what you're saying, will actually show the direction with clarity. I'm happy to do it. So I've actually volunteered to do it. I didn't do it under duress. I didn't do it under coercion. I didn't, it was not, um, an event where I was bullied, where I was given ultimatums. No, we had a discussion with the police and they said, you know what, if you want to do it, normally this will determine the case. So that's how I took my, I went and uh, went through the process. Not a good process. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. It's one of the things I've never been able to talk about. Not to my family, not to my friends. 
I can't even describe it to you. You go through a process that is very humiliating. It strips you of your dignity, strips you of your person. And in my mind, I just said, I'll just focus on the fact that this will be a game changer. But up until now, even as we speak, I have never been able, Dennis, I've never been able to describe what the process is like. It's, um, it hurts a lot, but I did it. And uh, what was done is when I realized, okay, it's time to engage a lawyer. Initial police investigation at the time indicated that there were more than two people in Karin Chepchumba's house. With police under pressure to bring to book the perpetrators of Karin Kili's killing, the media ran with the story. Police investigations have seen amongst other people former TV anchor Louis Otieno's DNA taken for examination. The Karin Chepchumba murder has awoken the ghost of a similar incident. Nothing like the house below it, belonging to Louis Otieno, who neighbours say has continued to stay away. The house consequently remaining locked since the incident. Leo Tieno was fighting a growing perception in the media that he knew something about Kili's killing. Mounting pressure forced Leo Tieno and his lawyer to come out. Various media articles regarding the unfortunate death of a friend, Kareen. The articles unfortunately have suggested that I am wanted or being sought by the police as a suspect. In addition, the articles have suggested that I am on the run, which is absolutely false. The effects of the articles is the effect of casting aspersions on my reputation, for which I am presently seeking legal advice with a view to taking appropriate action. The fact is that following the unfortunate demise of Kareem, a number of persons, all of whom knew the deceased in one way or another, have been contacted by the police to determine whether or not they have useful information regarding the incident. From the time this started, those of you who see the blogs, the blogs have gone viral, saying things which actually any thinking person, just looking at those stories, can see that they don't hold any water. With Leo Tien all the while maintaining that he had nothing to do with Karin's death and with the police unable to place him at the scene of the murder, the murder file in the hands largely focused on the alleged money that Leo Tieno had obtained from Karin. The family painted a picture of a man out to exploit their daughter. The focus shifted to the relationship that Leo Tieno enjoyed with Karin Kili's family. Our friendship in the way that she was friends with me was violently resisted by her parents, all right? It was violently resisted by her parents, and uh, that is one of the issues where she was seeking help. Her parents beat her up. They did, not once, not twice, and it was an issue. And we did seek intervention about this, the violence that was uh, meted out on her. We did seek assistance, we did seek intervention on it. Where did you seek assistance? We went to uh, a family friend. We saw them. Two times we had meetings with them. We went to their residence. And uh, after that, my advice to Karin was, it is best to start documenting all these incidents. It is best that when you see the doctor, when you go there for assistance, have it documented, have it recorded, so that there can be a history. As the family member bid farewell to Karin, the father of the slain girl informed our killers the family had planned to move on. Just like Jesus extended a hand of forgiveness, an offer of life yet after to the robber in the cross, I want to offer the same opportunity to whoever did this heinous act. And with that, the police forwarded Karin Kili's murder file to the Director of Public Prosecutions. The file largely spoke about findings of the police. 
The house had two used glasses on the kitchen table, indicating that maybe the person who killed Karina had shared a drink with her before strangling her. But who was this person? Police investigators were unable to establish a motive behind Karin Kili's killing. Money, allegedly owed to her by Louis but borrowed from family friends, appeared to be the strongest point in the file. The DPP returned his verdict. I was justified. I couldn't be surprised because that would mean I was not expecting it. I expected that clearance from day one. In fact, for me, it took too long to come. Police investigators were directed to place the murder file before a magistrate. The DPP was taking a longer route to justice, a public inquest. With Karin Chepchumba laid to rest, the investigation surrounding her death came to an end. Police officers had failed to arrest her killers. Police officers had failed to identify the man or woman who had an intimate moment with the telecommunications engineer before killing her. Police officers had failed to leave the thumbprint left on the neck of Karin Chepchumba by the killers. If Karin had sexual contact with the killer, who was this person? The killer of Karin Chepchumba appears to have meticulously planned Chepchumba's killing so well, complete with an exit strategy. The person who killed her outdid the night and the night security details as Antoni Apartments. The person outdid the police officer who visited the scene and outdid those seeking to know who exactly killed Karin Chepchumba and why. Forehand is called the forearm. It had a very deep breeze. And those breezes are called defense injuries. And as I told you, they always occur when the other person is conscious, is alert to what is happening, and therefore they try to ward off, to keep off the attacker. Kesho yake ndiyo tukona mama yake alikuja. Likuwa Tuesday. Ake fungulu ake ingia. Mimi nilikuwa nakata nyazi pale chini. Yeye alikuwa ananda pale saa mbili na nusu mpaka saa tatu na nusu hapa imetoka. So sio siku siku muona akitoka. Join me next week as we examine the statements of family members given to the police and why police might have led the real killers of the telecommunications engineer walk away free people. Case files, Killies killers continues next week. <laughs>